So this is my wife's 2025 Subaru Outback. We're going to do an oil change and we're going to install one of these Fomoto uh, quick oil drain uh, adapters in the, the plug of the pan. This video is going to be uh, unnecessarily thorough as I know a lot of Subaru owners like. So that's how I'm making these videos. Uh, so if you need a quick uh, reminder on how to do a couple things, this video is probably not for you or you're going to do a lot of forwarding. I just want to warn you in advance. Something else, uh, please check comments section if you need to know some specifics or if I have any corrections, I'll put that in the comments section. I can't alter the video once I've posted it. And sometimes things come up later that are important to tell you. So check the comments section as well. So I'm going to show you quickly how to pop the hood. Like I said, this is going to be really thorough. Uh, there's your little symbol for the hood. A lot of people, they'll pull this thinking that this is the hood release. This uh, opens up your fuse panel, I believe. I'm not pulling it out of there right now, though. Uh, so your little latch is in behind that. That pops your hood. I have this up on ramps, although when I change the oil, I'm taking it back off the ramps. I've never needed to use ramps. You can get the oil pan up underneath the car without using ramps, but I want to be able to video for you the oil drain plug. So I'm going to do that next and get this car back off these ramps to do the actual change. So we're going underneath the car. You're going to need a 17 millimeter and a short extension to get in there. Let me do that again. So there's the car, you come up underneath, you'll see the little gap there. There's your oil drain plug. So I'm gonna break that loose and uh, then I'll re-tighten it and come back under here when the car's off the ramps. Like I said, you don't normally have to do this. Actually, what works best for me once I've got that quick drain plug on there is I park it over a shallow ditch. Then there's room to put an old uh, empty uh, five quart oil container up under here and I just drain it right into my container to take back to recycling. So I've got it back off the ramps, hood releases right under here. You almost have to point your finger down in towards the car, not up towards the hood. Press over to the left, then lift your hood up. You can see it, there's your hood release there. And this one has a hood prop on it rather than uh, like a pneumatic cylinder to hold the hood up. So they've skimped a little bit on these newer ones. Basically, this is the same for 2020 through 2025. The end of that hood prop goes in there. Now the hood's in the up position. We're gonna drain the oil next, I'm getting back under the car. It's too tight of quarters to film that. And then we're gonna take this oil filter off. That's the original filter. We got uh, 4,000 miles on the car. I think the spec is actually 6,000. I like to change these a little more often though. There's what it looks like after you got the filter off. This is the part number for the filter that came off of it. This is what the factory installs uh, originally, although you cannot buy that part number anywhere that I've seen, including in Japan. I'm not sure what the deal with that is. I'm not sure if that's only required. Maybe it's a specialty filter on it for a new vehicle. I don't know. There's your Subaru part number for a Japanese made filter made by Tokyo Roki. Uh, the, I, these are very difficult to acquire in the US. Uh, and they're very expensive when you can find them. However, Tokyo Roki also makes one for Mazda that is absolutely identical, and that's the part number for Mazda. You can buy this if you want. You may run into warranty trouble if you start showing receipts for this type of filter. I don't know. It is exactly the same filter. You can see that 
I think his name's Mr. Subaru, the big Subaru uh, publisher on YouTube that describes these filters. And this is what he uses. So I bought a set of six from this uh, Mazda Swag. And they're a couple hours from me. So shipping was really quick for me on top of that. But that ended up being the cheapest place, MazdaSwag.com, to get these Mazda filters. So uh, what we're going to do first... So first, there's your Mazda filter. Of course, take this plastic off. And although we have to turn this thing upside down to install it on the car, I'm going to fill this up one time with the fluid that goes in it. And it's, it calls for a 0W20. Now that's another caveat. As long as this is under warranty, I'm going to make sure I show receipts for the, the spec uh, uh, filter weight or the oil weight of 0w20 as soon as i am out of warranty i am switching to 520 my wife's 2016 subaru outback it started burning oil at about 120,000 miles where it needed roughly a quart between changes as soon as i switched to 520 it quit burning oil and now we're over 200,000 miles and has never burned a drop of oil since i switched to 520 so as soon as warranty's up, I'm switching. But right now, it calls for 020 here in the United States. Like I said, don't forget to take that off. And then we're going to run. It looks like it might be lubricated on that O-ring already, maybe with some lithium grease. But I'm going to dab my finger in this oil and run it around. Before we install this, of course, we're going to go ahead and put our drain plug back in. Or if you're like me, I'm going to install this. Now... When you put your plug back in, you're supposed to put a new crush washer in. There's your part number for a new crush washer there at the plug. Of course, take the old crush washer off your plug. I'll probably show you that in a minute. And then uh, install a new crush washer and then put your oil plug back in. On this Fomoto kit, they include a gasket that you're supposed to use instead of that crush washer. I didn't do that on my wife's 2016 Subaru and it never leaked. So I'm gonna put a new crush washer in when I install this uh, drain uh, valve and uh, should be fine. But like I said, look in the comments. If I have problems later, I'm gonna post them in the comments. I don't anticipate any though. All right, here's our oil drain plug. And you can see that crush washer in there. A lot of times you're going to have to get a pick in there, especially when it's brand new car like this, because it's almost like the paint on that has stuck to this crush washer. So you're going to have to separate that crush washer out of there before you put your new one in. Otherwise you're going to have a stack of a bunch of them and that's not going to be good. Also, if you don't find it stuck here, it's probably stuck to your oil pan. You might have to go down on the bottom of the car and pick that off of there. And you can see here, I filled this oil filter up one time and then smeared the oil around that O-ring and now I'm letting it soak in. And now when I turn that upside down and install it on the car, the element in there is completely soaked with oil and it won't drain back out. Now I can't hold this thing above my head for like 30 seconds and not expect anything to drain out. But for that short time, you got to flip it over and screw it onto the car. It's not going to leak. And that gets as much oil into that as possible. So when you first start your car up after an oil change, you've got as much fluid in this filter as possible. Because what happens is this filter has to pump up with fluid before that oil gets to your engine. So you want as much oil in here as possible. I would imagine a lot of people install these dry and never have a problem. This makes me feel better to at least soak that uh, initially to get started with. Now, like I said, this is what you're supposed to use right here when you install this back in your drain on your oil pan. I am not going to do that. I'm going to install one of these new factory crush washers. The other thing is they include this little clip here, I guess, to keep that valve from opening up uh, while it's on your car. I've never used it. Like I said, my wife's got 200,000 miles on her Subaru. 
it's never come undone underneath the car. We're not heavy off-roading. It's not going to knock things around underneath with sticks and so forth. The one specialty tool that you might need for this job is a crow's foot. It takes a 19 millimeter crow's foot in there because you're working in really close quarters. And what happens is you're going to put that crow's foot around this guy here and then put your ratchet into it with a, with a short extension. It's possible you might be able to get that installed without this crow's foot, but I know I needed one the last time I installed one of these, and so I'm just going to start with that. So we'll put this in, then we'll put our new filter on, then we're ready to fill it up with oil. Now the next time you do an oil change, it's going to be super clean and awesome, because what you'll do is you'll just take a hose. doesn't have to be, this happens to be like fuel hose, but um, let's see if the size is on here. I don't have a size. I'm guessing that's 3 8 but vinyl tubing would work fine, whatever you want to do. And then what you'll do, actually, is you'll stick this on, open the valve. This is closed position here. To open that, you press up. It's under spring tension, and then rotate it over to open the valve. I'm just going to leave it in the closed position now as I'm working with one hand. But I end up draining this right back into an empty container, uh, so long as I'm over just a, a little ditch that makes enough room for my container to fit completely underneath the car because there's so much ground clearance on these and I don't even put it up on ramps. Like I said, this is the cleanest oil change I've ever done in any vehicle as soon as you install one of these. And honestly, it's only slightly messy uh, when you do the factory Subaru stuff with a normal drain plug. So I'm going to install this and get back to you as I install the filter. I'm going to try and video for you what that looks like installed. You definitely need that crow's foot. I don't think there's any way of installing that without it. There's what it looks like installed on the car. And so, now that we got that valve closed, I verified it was closed, of course. We got our pre-soaked filter. You can clean up that surface if you like. There's no grit in it. It's a brand new car, but normally I kind of wipe that down. Let's do that anyway. That's my typical procedure. That's what we're going to do. Get a clean paper towel. Clean that up. We kind of look down in there too and make sure there's no gnarly stuff going on down in there that may be dropped in during the oil change. So we're going to flip this guy over. Just like a normal filter, you should get it till it contacts. And then you're supposed to do three quarters of a turn. I go further than that, honestly. I probably over tighten these, but. Don't go crazy with it. Let's try three quarters and see if that ends up being correct. Well, we ruined it. That's about three quarters there. That's probably about right. Like I said, I tend to go just a little further. That got really tight there. That's the second it starts becoming really difficult to turn is when you stop the other thing too is you can kind of ruin a filter by when you've got this uh socket on here or whatever if you go to really wrench on it you can bend that filter up and ruin things so that's another reason not to go too tight with them so our drain plug is either back in or in our case of course we got the valve installed and closed we're ready to open this up and get a funnel and pour what's left of our five quarts back in. Remember, we poured some in this filter already, so we're gonna pour five quarts in basically. We got our funnel in place. I've cleaned the funnel to make sure there's no residue left from last time. I'm not gonna wait, make you wait while I pour this whole thing in. I'll get back to you after I've got it full of oil and put the cap back on. Everything's back in place. 
I'm going to throw this in the glove box. So if there's some major engine failure, I'll take that valve back off and then put the plug back in. Oop, hood prop. Having difficulty getting used to the hood prop on this guy. Now when we start it up, sometimes you'll get an oil light because it takes a second to build pressure. When that's a case, I just let it run for just, you know, five seconds. Then I turn it off and turn it back on. The other thing I do, which I didn't show you, is I look under the car after I pour the oil in and make sure it's not sitting all over the, the floor of the garage or on the ground. Uh, it's just a second check to make sure I put the plug back in or close the valve. So, no oil light this time, but like I said, on my wife's 2016 at least, sometimes that oil light would come on as that oil was working its way through the filter before it hit the sensor. And like I said, I just turn it off and then as soon as I turn it back on, that light should be off. Now we'll back this guy out of the garage. It's run a little bit here. Oil should be all the way through the system. And then we'll check the oil level and make absolutely sure we got the right amount in it. So we've let the car sit for a little bit. This can be really hard to see. But the level should be... Here's an important piece of info. I checked the oil. It's over full. This is not the same capacity as my wife's 2016 Outback, which is 5 quarts. The capacity for a non-turbo model, which is this one, is 4.4 quarts, and turbo models is 4.8 quarts. So I'm going to correct that earlier in the video. Uh, however, that's why you don't trust YouTubers. Trust your owner man owner's manual. Some of the, the, the information that YouTubers give is important, but man, we can be wrong just like anybody else. What will happen is if you overfill your oil pan, um, the crank will uh, aerate the oil and it will be like you're running your engine uh, in low oil because so much of that oil is made up of air at that point. Now you've got a bunch of air pumping through your system. So if you do that over the short term, no big deal, uh, like idling for 30 seconds like I had here, but I'm going to have to drain 0.6 quarts out the bottom. However, that's going to be really easy with this new oil drain. I'll just measure out 0.6 quarts in a measuring cup and uh, we should be dead on. I'm going to show you just so you know what it looks like when it's over full. The car is supposed to be sitting level for at least five minutes for all that oil to settle back into the pan. I've wiped this once already. Normally you pull this out and wipe it. Between these two dots, which are hard to see on camera, but there's two dots, one here and one here. The oil needs to be between both those dots. Like I said, it's hard to see on camera, but the oil level is actually like right in there. So that's our 0.6 quarts that were over full. So I need to get that drained before we start driving this on a daily basis. I'm not going to bore you with the details of how to do that. It's my mistake, but uh, always, always check.